CW23 presents See What's Now, your entertainment news source. Hey everybody, John and Katie with CW23. Today we're very excited to have one of the world's most beloved authors. He is a New York Times bestseller. He's had 11 film adaptations, which have grossed over three quarters of a billion dollars. And his latest film, The Choice, opens February 5th. Nicholas Sparks, thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me. So we saw the movie, we loved it. I'm just curious myself, what are some of the major differences between this movie and the novel that you wrote? Well, I think if, the, if there were any major differences, I think there was a little more chance in the novel to explore a little bit about what happens after the honeymoon ends, and so you got to see a little bit more about married life and things like that. With that said, I thought the film did a really great job of capturing the spirit and the intent of the story, and certainly it captured the spirit and the intent of the character. Yeah, and that's a great point about after the honeymoon and after the, the marriage. One, one thing I, I love about your films is they're not cookie cutter love stories. There's more to it. It acknowledges the fact that life isn't perfect. Oh yeah. Why did you, why do you take that approach on your novels and your films? More than anything, I just want the stories to feel real, right? And so that's why I'm not writing about astronauts or billionaires or even serial killers because, look, I know they're out there, but I haven't met any of them, right? <laughs> we, we hope not. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. So I try to write about people, a veterinarian or a medical school student, right? You feel like, hey, I know people like this. It was my cousin, it was my neighbor, it's someone at work, their, their kid or something like that. So, so it feels real. And then I try to draw them in, draw the viewer or the reader through all of the emotions of life so that it feels even more real. And in stories like these, that's what I try to do, and realism is part of that. Was there a specific event in your life or somebody that you know that helped you write the choice and gave you the idea for, the, for this? Not to help write, no, that's always on me. But Travis, yeah, he was inspired by my older brother. He was, okay. he was great. My brother was a, a great bachelor. I got married relatively young and I'd call him, oh, I'm changing diapers and getting puked on and what are you doing? Oh, I'm going sailing and going out with Meg on Friday and Joan on Saturday and then we're having a barbecue and you're like, huh, your life sounds happier yeah. or more carefree than mine yeah. at this time, right? So I really wanted to write a story about a guy who, all right, he's very content, but one by one his friends have been married and well, what would it take for him to finally settle down? Mm -hmm. Definitely. You've worked with many talented actors and helped launch a lot of careers. Uh, CW fans in general will be excited about this film because Tom Welling is coming back to the screen. Of course, we all know him from Smallville, which was on our station. Uh, what was it like? I mean, did you have a lot to do with the casting process and what was it like working with this group? Oh, it was a lot of fun. And yes, I do have a lot to do with casting. I've had a lot to do with casting ever since the, my very first films came out. And so, and, I'm, and with, with that said, I'm just one voice in the room, right? I mean, the studio has opinions and the director has opinions and sometimes the other co-stars have an opinion. What was great about this particular cast was the way we wanted to film, we, we knew we were going to ask them to do so much emotionally. They made a very familial atmosphere on set so everyone just felt comfortable enough to really go deep and, and, and try different things without any other tension from the set itself. Okay. So this film was shot in North Carolina and South Carolina, and I believe you're from North Carolina, is that correct? That's correct. So um, one thing I noticed is that the scenery is amazing. Did you choose the location since you're so familiar with the area? Yeah, it was filmed about 10 minutes from where I was living, so I knew all okay. these areas. And I, yeah, I was actually in on the selection of the locations and how we did that. Well, we just hopped in the boat and just rode along. Well, how about that place? Or how about that place? And we found this great house and had this empty lot kind of next door and we said, okay, we can put up a little house there for Gabby's, right? It was great. The, I guess the main problem I have with your films is that <laughs> these leading guys, you're setting the bar way too high. Yeah, right? I mean, come on, like, did you see The Bachelor a couple years ago? Uh, of course. Juan Pablo, that's more my kind of guy because after, <laughs> After that season, like anything I did, my wife was like, you're a great guy. Right, of But course. if she's going to see these kind of movies, she's going to think, like, you're just, you're slumming it. John's and in trouble. I'm in trouble, yes. <laughs> are, is this the type of person that you are, or where did you, where does this come from? Well, you know, I, I would like to think I'm like this a little <laughs> bit, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's something to aspire to. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I tend to be fairly empathetic, and I tend to be, as a writer, observant of mm -hmm. other people. So if, you know, Someone says, hey, I really like this, and you know, months later I'll remember it at gift time and things like that. And of course I'm a writer, so jotting notes or writing things in cards or writing special letters, that, that probably comes easier to me than other people. Since so many of your novels have been turned into films, nowadays when you're writing them, do you write with the intent that it could become a script or do you just 
focus on the novel? Yeah, that's a great question. It's both, really. When I'm thinking of the story, I think in terms of both the novel and the film. So I try to come up with characters that might be interesting, both uh, in, in a story with words and then a story with pictures. And so you try to pick things that'll work in both mediums. But then once I have a story that I think will work both as a novel and a film, and I actually start writing, like the first sentence, it's only about the writing. After that, I just concentrate on the novel. You, you mentioned that you now have your own productions company, Nicholas. Nicholas Sparks Productions, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and you're coming out with some, some TV shows on top of the movies, and one thing that we're very excited to hear about CW23 is that The Notebook right. is coming back as a TV show yeah. for the CW, is that right? We're hoping it's up okay. to the we're CW, right? right? You know, so Let's no, make this happen. Come on, CW. You have a yes from both of us. Yeah, yeah. So. Who, 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 want, who doesn't <laughs> want to know what happens to Noah and Allie in those middle years, Yeah, right? and that's what I was going to ask is what part of Noah and Allie's life will this take place in? It literally picks up, for those who've seen the film, not necessarily the novel, but it picks up where Allie steps out of the car, looking up at Noah in the house, she shrugs and drops the suitcase, right? Oh, from that moment, well, we know what happens at the end of their lives. But what happened from that moment until the end of their lives? Definitely. Yeah. All right, well, we love the movie The Choice. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Everyone, you. make sure you see it in theaters February 5th.